Learn and play online. Today, we are going to learn about units of measurement that we can use when measuring the mass of objects. When measuring the mass of an object, we use formal units of measurement. In this video, we are going to use the metric system, which include grams, kilograms, and tons. Why is it important to learn about formal units of mass? For example, if you were following a recipe to make a delicious dish, you would need to know the exact amounts of ingredients to use. If the recipe just said a little bit of sugar, you wouldn't know exactly how much sugar to put in, would you? That's because your idea of a little bit might be different to the author's. But if the recipe said 50 grams of sugar, you would be able to measure the exact amount needed to make sure the dish turns out perfectly. The smallest units of mass that we would use in everyday life are grams. The abbreviated form of grams is the lowercase letter G. An easy and accurate way to measure something in grams would be to use a digital kitchen scale. As you can see, as more of the ingredient is added to the bowl, the digital kitchen scale continuously measures the mass that is being put in. You can also see the lowercase g here to indicate that the ingredients are being measured in grams at the moment. Grams are used to measure the mass of very light objects. To give you an idea, using real life examples, a tennis ball weighs around 57 grams. A paper clip has a mass of around 1 gram. The next time you go to the shops, see if you can locate the mass of different grocery items. Look at this packet of pasta for example. Can you see its mass detailed somewhere on the packaging? This packet of pasta weighs 250 grams. What about this packet of M&Ms? What is its mass? The mass of this packet of M&Ms is 49 grams. Here are some of the things that we came up with that you can measure in grams. What other things can you think of? You can pause the video now to make a list and share it with someone. At what point do we stop using grams to measure things though when their mass becomes heavier? Here is a fact that will help you. If you have 1000 grams, that means you have 1 kilogram. That's right, if you can picture 1000 paper clips together, that will be about 1 kilogram. The abbreviated form for kilogram are the letters kg together. To relate it to real life examples, a small bag of sugar or a small bag of rice from the supermarket has a mass of 1 kilogram. When measuring the mass of objects in kilograms, the use of a scale would give you accurate measurements. When talking about objects measured in kilograms, it is a large range of things. It could be as little as an average sized pineapple which weighs around a kilogram, to super heavy gym equipment that you may struggle to lift or carry. Here are some of the things that we came up with that you can measure in kilograms. What other things can you think of? You can pause the video now to make a list and share it with someone. Now we have come to the last formal unit of mass, which is a ton. The abbreviated form for a ton is the letter T on its own. Here is how you know you've reached the mass in tons. When you have 1000 kilograms, that means you have 1 ton. To relate it to real life examples so you have a better understanding, a small car or an average sized bull weigh around a ton each. So when referring to things that weigh a ton or more, you are talking about very heavy objects. Here are some of the things that we came up with that you can measure in tons. What else can you think of? You can pause the video now to make a list and share it with someone. Let's recap on what we have learned today. Grams are the smallest unit of mass that we use in everyday life. We use grams to refer to things that are light in weight. There are 1000 grams in a kilogram and we use kilograms to refer to things that are on the heavier side. When you have 1000 kilograms, that means you have 1 ton, and tons are used to refer to extremely heavy things. 
Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe for more videos.